to chemical science, what's the matter? Let's talk about matter. Matter is a physical substance that takes up space and has a weight. Matter is stuff. Chairs, people, drinks, oceans, animals, grass, water, everything is made up of matter. Even space stuff is made up of matter. matter is made up of particles called atoms and molecules. And these atoms and molecules bond and work together and sometimes against each other to make matter happen. There are three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. First to solid has a regular pattern and a fixed shape and cannot be compressed, which pretty much means it's great for making tables and chairs and things that are solid, hard to lean on. They don't, while they can sometimes be put in other objects, they don't always take up the space. And of course, it has a weight to it as well. Now, next state of matter is a liquid. Liquid takes up the space, has a weight, the, but it's free flowing. It has a regular-ish pattern, but as I said, it takes up the container's space. It's allowed to move a little bit more and have that sort of liquid, that flow feeling. The third state of matter is gas. Gas pretty much just does what it wants, when it wants. Floats around, buzzes around, the no pattern whatsoever. It can be compressed though, so we can catch that gas and we can shove it into things like balloons or aerosol containers. Experiment time. Let's get you involved. These are things that you too can do at home along with me or after you've seen this tutorial. So, we were talking about solids, liquids and gases before we're going to do some quick experiments that hopefully will demonstrate to you exactly what they are and how they work in their simple form. Alright. So we have here some containers. I have some science containers. This is a flask, it's a nice triangle shape in there. I have a fish bowl, it's a nice spherical shape. I also have some, just some simple kitchen containers that I grabbed from my home this morning, different shapes. I have some solids here in front of me. I have some tornado makers, nice, stay the same. I have some pegs. And I have some marbles. You at home might have some toys or some Lego or some other sort of blocks that you might like to experiment with. Okay, first experiment. I'm going to use my marbles. And remember we said that the solid has a fixed shape. So even though I might be able to put it into something, it shouldn't change its own shape and it won't fit perfectly. All right, so I put some marbles into my cup here. You can see that yes, they're in the cup, they're sitting nicely, but if we have a closer look, you can see perhaps that there's some gaps in between the marbles, that the marbles themselves haven't changed their shape and it's not fitting 100% perfectly. Okay, while I'm using my marbles, let's pop them into my plastic container, see if we can make a rectangle. Again, they're sitting nicely in the bottom there, but there's gaps in between. Go ahead and have a play, have a bit of an experiment with different things. Let's have a go at some pegs in the fishbowl. Pegs in the fishbowl. Definitely they have not changed shape and they haven't even started to fill up the bottom of the bowl. And lastly, let's try some tornadoes in a cup. No, look at the big gap down the side and these have not changed their shape. So, solids have a regular pattern. They are fixed shape generally, as in our marble. They don't take up all the space in the container, but they do have a weight. Moving on to liquids. Liquids, remember we said, were free flowing. Again, this is something you can do at home. I have put some colour in my water, a nice orange colour, just to make it a little bit more exciting. But normal tap water is fine as well. I have my similar containers or same containers from before. And we're just going to test the theory that the liquid will take the shape of any container, that it's a little bit more free flowing and that we can't compress it. We can't squash it in there to make more fit in. Okay, so I'm just going to use my plastic cup first, which is sort of cylindrical, sort of cone shape. Pour my water in carefully. 
Okay, I have made that cup very full. If you do do this at home, you may need a nice, clear, wet space, wet space where it's safe to work. All right, I have filled my cup right up to the top. Sometimes when you fill the cup right to the top, it might look like there's a little bubble on the top. That's just the surface tension of the water, and that's how we know that the water can't be compressed. I can't squash that water down and pour more in, because all that will happen is I will make a mess. Okay, let's try a different container. As you can see, I'm using a jug and I'm recycling the water, so I'm not going and getting new water all the time. Let's try a flask. Now, a flask is a triangle shape. Beautiful. So I now have my water has taken up the whole space. It's definitely quite heavy in there. To show you that it's free flowing though, I'm going to carefully place my hand and seal the end. And can you see a little swirly motion there? Let's pull some back. There it is. So you can see that as I tip, there's a little bubble of air there that the water is quite happy to move around and flow through the container. Okay. What about my fish bowl? Now the pegs didn't work in here last time. Let's see if our water will fill this and take its space. That happens beautifully. Now I can swoosh it carefully and my water is flowing through and moving around that bowl quite nicely there. All right, one more test, just, just to make sure. You do have to just make sure. Pour it in. This time I'm going to see if I can compress it. Now that's quite full. Let's see if we can compress that water. Shove a bit more in, a bit more, a bit more. That is, oh no. This is a very simple experiment. Again, you can follow along at home. You can do this at another time. I have used just a kitchen skewer, but I chopped the end off to make it a bit safe so there was no point of it. I've just got some string and some two balloons. So, I, as I said, blew, blew this balloon up. It is now inflated, full of carbon dioxide, which is what we breathe out. If you have a look on the board, Behind me, you can see I've drawn what the atoms and molecules would look like if we zoomed in really closely. It is one carbon atom and two oxygen to make it carbon dioxide because di means two. I have my deflated balloon on the end, which we said had no gas. Now, gas has weight. This is true. We know this is true because it's a state of matter. And we said that all states of matter take up space and have weight. To test this, just in case some of you don't believe me, to test this out, we've got this little experiment happening. So we tie them with roughly the similar amounts of string on either end, and we should see what? Can you predict what we might see? If you made the prediction that this one of the balloons is going to be heavier than the other, then you made a very good prediction. What we should see is our inflated balloon, the one with the gas, be heavier than the deflated one. Now, there are different types of gases in the world and each one are different in weight. Have a bit of airflow in my lab, but I can just see that my inflated balloon is definitely the heavier side of the scale. Challenge time. Okay, we've spoken about solids, liquids and gases and I've demonstrated to you what they could be and what they do look like and their properties, what makes them a solid, a liquid or a gas. Your challenge now is to go around your home, inside, outside, bedroom, maybe seek some assistance from whoever's at home to help you out, especially with certain products and you're going to come up with a list of household items that fit into the solids, liquids and gases categories. So I've collected some things from around my lab. 
uh, this morning, but you might have different things at home. And I would be very curious to see what you guys come up with. Okay, so here I have a pool noodle. This is usually a flotation device or sometimes you might use it in a game or a sport. But today I'm going to put it into my solids category. So it has a fixed shape and I can't squish it to make it fit anywhere. So it does have a bit of movement, but I'm pretty convinced that it's a solid into my solids category. This one's an easy one. You guys should already know. This is my inflated balloon full of gas. That's right. So that one goes into my gas category. Okay, what about this one? Oh, what can I see? What can you see? Where do you think I should put this one? It's milk. It's not an unusual milk bottle, but it's definitely taken the shape of this water bottle container, hasn't it? So that must be a liquid. So I'm going to make that my liquid pile. Uh, okay, now I have my morning tea. It's a box. I'm pretty certain that I couldn't squash this down or compress it. It's a definite shape. So I'm going to put that into my solids category. Then I have this, some food coloring. Bit hard to see, it is moving around in there. I'm, that's my liquid. And I have one more item, I have a can. I can hear something and I can feel something. It's definitely got a bit of a weight to it. Um, oh, something definitely came out then. I can actually smell that, that must be a gas. Your turn now. Have fun. Tune in to part two for changing states.